Welcome back, thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Today we're making wooden animals with the bandsaw. Let's get started. So the idea to make these came when I saw this video right here on YouTube about 11 years ago. It's a guy making one of these super quickly with a bandsaw with like a super thin narrow blade. So I think the guy in the video is just making these to show off his new bandsaw. But what really intrigued me was how quickly he makes one of these. So ever since I saw that video 11 years ago, every time I've had a bandsaw in front of me and a bit of time to kill, I've tried to make one of these. This is the first one I made when we bought that little bandsaw when we first moved into this shop. <laughs> but as you can see from this little guy, the proportions aren't always super easy to get right, especially if you haven't made one in a while. So to make that process much easier, I made a couple of paper templates that you can cut out and glue onto the wood, and then you can just follow the line and cut out the animals like that. So I got a template for a deer similar to the one in the video, and I also made a squirrel and a little dog. Enough talk, let's start making. So all the templates are made to fit inside a standard 2x4. And all of the templates have the dimensions of the piece of wood that we need to start making this. I used the table saw to cut my 2x4 into the dimensions of the template, but you can also use the bandsaw for this. So now that we have our pieces of wood cut, we'll take our templates, cut them out, and then use some glue stick to glue them onto the wood. Fold them along the line. Don't worry, this is just normal glue stick. I don't know why it's purple. We've got all three pieces of wood ready with the templates glued onto them. And the next step will be to start cutting out the pieces. I'm already at the bandsaw that I'll be using to cut out the pieces. I've got a six millimeter blade on here. If you have multiple blades for your bandsaw, put on the thinnest one, that will make the job much easier. So we're gonna start with the deer and we're gonna cut this side first. We'll start by cutting away the pieces in between the legs and the horns first, and then we'll make one long cut on each side of the deer. That will make more sense in a minute, so let's start cutting. <laughs> side is cut and we now have this little guy. Looks great from the front, not so much from the side. Okay, the next step is to cut out the other side. And the trick to making these animals is the same for all three of them. The important part is that from the first side we cut, we need to save the two sides. So now that we have our sides that fit against the deer, we're now going to use some tape and tape the thing back together. And now we have a block taped together and ready to be cut out on the other side. On this side especially, you don't need to worry about being able to follow the line precisely. If you can't make all the small curves, you can also cut a little bit outside the line and then go back and clean them up after. Just like I did on some of the harder areas on this side. Let's cut.
other side is cut out and now to the almost magical part of this process. And that is seeing how this suddenly can turn into this. Look at it, isn't it just so cool? That's the deer, let's make a squirrel. And for the squirrel, we're again gonna cut the front side first. Oh, and by the way, keep watching until the end of the video, I'll show you how to make all these figures even better. Same two steps, cut out the front, tape it back together, cut out the side, and so far this is definitely much easier to cut out than the deer. And this is our little squirrel right now. However, this little guy is not finished yet. <laughs> so right now he's still a little bit chubby and quite square and he has one big thingy in the front instead of two little paws. So you might have noticed that on the template the squirrel doesn't sit flat like this, but at an angle. And that is on purpose because now that he's cut out, we can set him flat down on the table and he will lean back enough so that we can cut his little arms without cutting into his nose. So we're gonna set him on the table like this and then cut him some arms and also give him a little bit more of a squirrel-like shape. I made an illustration of what we want him to look like right here. That's our little squirrel. Also quite easy to make. The cuts are definitely a little bit simpler than with the deer and he's a little less fragile. Although there is another operation, okay? And last but not least, let's do the little doggy. So up next is our little doggo here. Exactly the same principles as with the other two animals. The only thing different, which also makes this a little bit harder, is that the first side will cut is the front, which we'll have to cut standing up. So we'll need to cut down the tall end of this block. But otherwise, exactly the same. Save the two halves, tape it back together, and then cut the front. So that's our little doggy cut on both sides. A little tip with this one is to cut out the waist first and then tape that one again so it holds together nicely. Wait, what? <laughs> this dog has a little bit weird ears. So there's a few more steps to this little guy. First, we're gonna start by flipping him upside down and then cutting away all the excess material that is stuck to his ears. A 
look at it now, much better. There's only one last thing that we need to deal with, and that is his little neck thingy that he's got hanging on underneath here. Luckily, that's super easy to fix. We'll just take a pair of pliers and break it off. And that's it, our little dog is finished. Now I did promise I'll show you how to make these look even better. Here, let me show you. You see, with just a little bit of sanding and rounding over some edges and maybe defining some of the features, you can make them look even more realistic. So depending on how comfortable you are with the bandsaw, you can also use it to round over some of the bigger areas on these animals. Just be really careful and make sure that you don't cut yourself. I find a deer looks much better with a little bit of a rounded body and the scroll also needs some heavy rounding. And giving the dog a little bit more of a pointy nose and a little bit of a waist also makes it look much more realistic. Okay, so that will be it for this one, guys. I hope you liked it. If you want to try and make these yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description to where you can download these templates. And if you do make one of these, tag me on Instagram so I can see what you're doing. So let me know which one of these is your favorite in the comments down below. As for now, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please consider subscribing if you like what I do. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da